This is literally oh, healing my inner I, child. If, if I had tights, I wanted to wear shorts. Yeah, I love shorts it. Shorts and tights and tights. I it's love it. Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of The Beauty of a Podcast presented by Ulta Beauty. I am your host, David Lopez, having some really fun conversations with people who are helping us redefine what beauty is and where it lives. Today's guest is someone that I have been seeing on television for a very long time. I'm kind of gagged, as most of the time when I have a guest in front of me that I'm a fan of, I keep it real cool. Uh, but <laughs> please help me in welcoming Monique Coleman. Hi, my love. Hello. Thank you so much for being here and sharing space with us. Thank you for having me. This is um, going to be an interesting conversation because the episode is talking about ageism, right? And we were just talking back in the green room about ageism. And, and I know you looked up the definition, which is essentially yes. discriminating someone for based their, their age, age based on their age, particularly in a workforce right. setting. But I think we all feel it in all sorts of communities. Hollywood is one of them. Definitely. And I know that when you filmed High School Musical, if you didn't already know, um, you were older than the cast. I did not yes. know that. Yes. A lot of people don't know that. Okay. Um, How much older were you? So Vanessa and I are nine years apart. <laughs> Yes. Okay. Corbin and I are eight years apart. And so at that time when people would make, insinuate rumors about us, I'd be like, mm -mm, that would be statutory. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, no, he's really my little brother. Yeah. Yeah. No. So we there was a, a significant age difference. And I think that that really impacted uh, my experience off screen, definitely more than on and throughout the years um, in the sense of kind of developing a little bit of imposter syndrome. Okay. And also when I started on Disney, I had no expectation that it was going to continue. And so in a little in some ways I was kind of bringing myself to portray younger in real life and then it just kept going on and on and I had to sort of reconcile my on-screen life with my off-screen life and sort of bridge that gap. Now tell me more about that because if you don't know and you're listening or you're watching this, I know that there is I once upon a time I used to be an actor. That's what I came to New York to do. And I know that there this was a long time ago but even back then People would say like, not don't put your real age on Absolutely. your resume or your headshot. So when you show up to an audition, say you're younger than you are. So during that time frame, you were going to auditions. I mean, you look very what we would consider to be look someone looking young. Sure, I can imagine then when you were 25, 26, you obviously passed for someone who was 16, 17. Yes. What was that experience like for you going into these castings? Like, were you going to the castings? As someone that was playing 17 years old? Definitely. Okay. I, I, I'll never forget, I had a specific audition for a movie called The Reading Room. And the, which I think you're not supposed to do this, but the director asked me how old I was. And I knew that if I said that I was 24, that immediately he was going to think differently of me. Mm. And so my response, the character was also a little sassy. And my response was, I'm as old as you think I am. And he said, no, really, how old are you? And I was like, I'm whatever age you want me to be. And I just literally never said my age. And it really went with the character, so I got away with having right. that kind of an attitude. But the truth is, is that I did feel like the moment I opened my mouth, it s suddenly shifted and I was perceived differently, even though like visibly I was able to portray a teenager because I was in my mid-20s at that time that did immediately make people think differently. And I often lost out on jobs because of it. How did that affect your personal life? Like going, the mindset you must have to go into yeah. that you're showing up to an audition, you're like, okay, I'm embodying a 17 year old, I need to act differently. Did that affect your like off screen or your off time life? Or your I think I think it all just impacts you because okay. ultimately being an artist, you are constantly faced with the too much or not enough of something, right? And so you're constantly trying to figure out what it is that that is going to land you the job or what it is that is that has kept you from it. I struggle sometimes to be taken seriously in certain environments, even when I say that I'm 42. People go, oh, wow, oh, my gosh. And then I get the whole, like, the whole room blows up and it's shock. But then shortly thereafter, I start getting sweetie and babied again. Mm. And it's it's something that, I don't mind, except that when it undermines my wisdom. Mm. I've been through so much to be the person that I am today. And at times I feel that because my face betrays me, it betrays the heartache that I've been through. It betrays the betrayal that I've endured. It betrays the sacrifices that I've made. It um, in many ways uh, makes me at times 
have to fight for the place that I occupy. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, I'm also really grateful because I know <laughs> that this melanin is just like keeping me, you know, very youthful and, and it allows me to connect to young people in a yeah. way that I think really supports my purpose. And so for me, it was, it was something that I did struggle with for a while that I completely embrace now. For mm. me, I love my age mm. and I... Thankfully, have I have traveled extensively. I've worked on myself a lot. I've worked on a lot of self-development to not let these things, even though they can be triggering, I don't let them be defining. I still take that step back. I do believe that we that our lives are not necessarily like mapped out for us, but yeah. I do think that they do have a divine purpose. And I think that we arrive at certain places for a reason that's bigger than us and maybe sometimes something we're not even necessarily privy to. We need to start redefining what experience looks like. Yes. And I think oh. learning, continuing to learn, continuing to, continuing, to learn. continuing to learn, continuing to expand yourself and not allowing the limitations that other people either experienced or want to place on you to become your truth. Yeah. I remember at 30, around 34 or 35, I started doing yearly birthday projects. Mm. So at 34, I decided to hire a choreographer and I learned a contemporary dance because I I never had before. Such a good idea. And I wanted to show people, you know, that you still have time to do the things that you desire to do. And now in my 40s, I want to be an action hero. And I'm training for that. And I sometimes I'm I'm, you know, picking up different weapons or I'm doing my martial arts or taking classes. And I just think, wow, if only I hadn't seen 40 as being so old, mm. I would have started this so much sooner. So much sooner. But looking at women like Viola Davis or Robin Wright, I mean, when Wonder Woman came out and those women were flipping <laughs> were flipping up in the air in their 50s, I do think it's unfortunate that there is any sense of discrimination or um, just n a negative perception on the lines on your face that tell the stories of your experience. These scars, these lines, these wrinkles, whatever they are, they hold they hold who we are and I and I'm not a mother, but I I have been pregnant twice and during those times I was looking at, you know, motherhood and and just on following blogs and different things like that and just seeing what what especially, you know, mothers were going through in terms of their bodies changing and these standards that are that are put on beauty when you literally made an entire you created a whole mm. life. Mm -hmm. You know, I think we in general as a society sometimes can focus more on the external and not the internal that is being shown outside. Mm -hmm. That ultimately we look like what we've been through in in some instances and and there's nothing wrong with there's nothing there's not 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 just that there's nothing wrong with getting older. I think that there's something so beautiful about having more time and um Whatever we look like and however we wear that, there, we shouldn't be um, el el eliminated or, or kept from anything that we ultimately want to do based on that. Yeah. What does, what sort of pressures does Monique Coleman as a human being feel right now in mm. regards to her age? Not as an actress, but as yeah. a person, as a human being on this planet. Um, who? So... I was married for 10 years and I recently got divorced and I didn't expect to be here. You know, when I was 29 and I met my, my former husband, I really thought that that was what my life was going to look like. And so personally being 42 um, and not having started a family, what's interesting is that on this side of things, I don't even know what I want anymore which is scary but and beautiful and terrifying and lovely. I can imagine it's very liberating too. It's, it's, so, which is, it's so many things, yeah. you know? It's like um, on this one hand, I have this, this external uh, suit, you know, this skin suit that I'm in that it in some ways says to people, this is, this is who I am. This is, uh, this is my age, right? Like people see me and they think that I'm somewhere in my late twenties or early thirties. But then my life experience has put me in a place where I'm starting over completely. And I'm scared. I'm scared. I don't know. 
you know, I and, and I know that I am exactly where I'm meant to be because I wouldn't be here if I wasn't. Um, I've always wanted to inspire people. I've always yeah. wanted to be impactful in some way. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, and I knew that um, I knew that that in many ways that I'm here for young people. I think that that's why I was a part of High School Musical. Why I'm in Disney is that I'm so passionate about youth. But I didn't really think about this part of life. I didn't think about what it was like to to be in, impactful or, or inspirational to someone who's been through miscarriages. I didn't know what it was going to be like to be inspirational to someone who had gone through a divorce, um, who was starting their life over in their 40s, who had never really dated. That's what I'm going through. I'm going through the realization that as, um, you know, as much as I thought that I was on the path that I wanted, that in many ways I was on the path that I chose from my trauma. And now that I am facing those traumas and healing from those things, I internally feel almost as young as I did when I made the decisions that got me there in the first place. Except now I'm not that age. <laughs> I'm not 29 years old. I'm 42. And there are certain expectations. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm on a dating app and I'm like, what is this shit? <laughs> I'm sorry, I hope not. But I'm sorry. like, it's crazy. I'm like, yeah. I'm, you know, I, I come from a time where I didn't want to get on Twitter when, when it came out. I didn't want to be on social media. I was really worried and nervous about this generation and how much, how much technology was influencing the way that we connect and communicate with one another. And now here I am having to, you know, talk to my friends that are 10 and 15 years younger and really finding my own place in it all. And, and figuring it out one step at a time, one day at a time, and, and one conversation at a time. I think it's very, very clear, mm. the purpose. And I know it's terrifying. Yeah. And I know it is so deeply, <sighs> deeply unsettling because it almost feels like you were in a... Remember when you're a kid and you're at the beach and you get caught in like a really big wave and you're just like spinning under the water and you don't know which way is up mm. or down. You're enjoying it, but you're also terrified. And then you come out of it and you're like, wait, where am I? Like, and you mm. know, your <laughs> swimsuit's is covered in sand and you're, it's just like, I don't yeah. know which way is up, which way is down. I think that, I don't know. I think it's a gift. I, I do agree with that. I do think it is a gift. Not to negate the pain of it. And oh, my I, I God. Think it's, but I'm always but, like, but, but hold hands with the darkness. But I don't think that pain is a problem. No, you my know? God. Yes, thank you for saying that. Yeah, yeah, I think that when we avoid our pain, that's when we develop problems that we don't realize we have until they're too late. Yeah. But I just want anyone that's listening out there to to really own their own hero's journey to own their own life experiences and know that that unique, beautiful amalgamation of things <laughs> is what um, is what this life is really for. Yeah. What do you think you've learned about others or yourself in the experience of being misaged? Are there any lessons you've like learned there? Uh, mm. How people might talk to you differently or? Oh, that's a great. I feel like, ooh, it could be, because I'm misaged as being younger, mm. it requires me to own and project myself in ways that may be uncomfortable to me. So every year, this isn't what you asked, but I just want to share it. Every year I come up with either a word or a theme or something that kind of defines what that year is. And so my 2023 is the year of authority. And the reason why is because I hate that word. Mm. Um, but I also, I think I hate it because I've outsourced it my entire life. And so now I am stepping into being my own authority and asserting myself and not needing for someone, what someone's a perception or opinion of me to impact me in any way, yeah. um, other than it's their opinion. Um, I love the concept of authority because I think we equate it with age. I also think when we're starting to look at the just humanity of what it is to be a human on this planet mm -hmm. and how we age and how we define aging and how we equate it to wisdom and having authority, I think that there are people behind us who are in a lot of ways are a lot more mature. Absolutely. Than people 30 years ago. Above us. Definitely. It, it really has nothing to do with age. It has to do with openness. Mm. Are you open-minded? Are you open-hearted? Do you live a wholehearted life? Do you allow yourself to be vulnerable? Do you, do you think you know everything? 
Um, and, and a lot of times, you know, and for me, it's the reason why I chose authority is because, because I'm aged or, or like seem so much younger, I sometimes unintentionally play into that mm, okay. or allow that to become my reality and think, oh, it's fine, but it's not fine because I'm not. I'm not who I am because I'm 42. I'm who I am because of the work that I've done on myself, because of the books that I've read, because of the podcasts that I listen to, because I'm a constant seeker. And so I think you're exactly right that it doesn't matter whether someone's 10 years older or 10 years younger or where you are on that spectrum. What matters is where you are mentally, emotionally, and spiritually, and your willingness to continue to learn and grow and not um, not be stuck yeah. in the experiences or the things that you've done yeah. up into that point. What would you tell the actual high school Monique Coleman, mm. what you know now? Is there something you would tell her, like the 15-year-old, 17-year-old version of you? What would you tell her now? I would tell her, my love, nothing is wrong with you. And just because people aren't ready to hear what you have to say doesn't mean that it doesn't have value. Mm. That's beautiful. I love that. Thank you. I think it's important to stay connected to our inner child yeah. always. I am a very childlike person. Same. If anyone knows that about me. <laughs> I mean, look at us. I know. I'm just like a very, I'm just very childlike. Yeah. I always have been. I, I like people talk about what they were doing at 15 and I was like, oh, I was playing Power Rangers at 15 still. I was not, <laughs> you know, going out smoking and drinking. I didn't care about that. Yeah. But I think it's important to honor that inner child. And I've said this in another episode where, I wish people would play more. I wish they would stay connected to that part of you that is still curious yes. about the world and still feels and knows that you don't know everything. Absolutely. Do you know what I mean? I do. I do. I think, you know, especially as a youth advocate, there's so much that we can learn mm. from letting go mm. and from watching kids and, and young people. And, you know, it's so important that we don't try to grow up too fast or ever, whatever that even means. Curiosity, I think, is is one of the the greatest assets that we can have. And it just makes our life experience so much more enjoyable. Yeah. What would you tell Monique Coleman 10 years later from mm, today? Like 10 years from now? From now. Girl, I'm so proud of you. <laughs> Girl, I am yeah. so proud of you. Um well done. Way to be brave. Um, and uh, I'm already annoyed with this, but be patient. It's coming. Because I do believe that. I do, I do believe that from where I sit, that everything that I deeply desire, and I desire so many things, I do believe that they're on their way to me. And timing matters. And that's one thing that I really have learned is that if things had happened any sooner, I really wouldn't have been ready for them. Mm. So I did make a contract with the universe to not allow me to get, I think being early is just as scary as being late. Because if you get there and you aren't prepared for it, then you you won't keep it. And so I know that from where I sit, that I am really ready for the things that are coming. And I want to make sure that I do the work to not just earn it, but to keep it. Yeah, and I can tell that you're really advocating for yourself in that. And I, I just want to like link it back to like the, the the work that you do with youth is so important. I think we need to really instill these kinds of thoughts and feelings and values in the people coming up behind us. Yeah. Um. You did bring up something that I just was thinking too. I, I think about this a lot, and I'm like, the things that I've wanted for my life now. I'm I'm 37 years old. I'm turning 38 in two weeks, and I have a panic disorder and when I it started when I was around 11 and one of my triggers when I'm not joking when I was 12 was that I was aging oh my god me too I was like I'm not famous yet I was like I was no because I grew up with boy I bands 10, and every, I was like oh my god they're 15 they're famous already I'm not I haven't done anything with my life I used to it used to be a real trigger for I, me honestly I promise you I promise you I've never heard someone else talk about this I was the same way and I, I, hmm, I don't want to get too woo woo here, but I do think that some of it is being an old soul. Oh yeah. I feel like I came in into this planet knowing that I had a mission, yeah. and I felt late yeah. when I turned ten. I was like, oh my god, I'm 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 in double digits now. <laughs> I remember like every year I was like, I I just haven't done enough. I haven't I haven't contributed enough. Yeah. That is so. You're literally the first person that I've spoken to that had a visceral. Yeah. 
like like devastating yeah, devastated and it wasn't about fear of of anything yeah. to do with anything other than i i'm supposed to do so much and i and i'm not sure if i'm on track yeah I can't I, even appreciate things. No, I completely understand that. And sometimes I have to remind myself that like there, there are times in our lives that our lives are not linear, right? And so there are going to be these these moments where we deviate from what we perceive as the path mm. to lead us to where we think we want to be. But ultimately, we don't really know what that is. We know what we want it to feel like, but we don't know what it actually is. And sometimes I find myself not taking certain opportunities because I'm I'm overthinking how old I will be at the end of that opportunity that I didn't even get yet. I heard something a few years ago. I I feel like it was Tony Robbins, but I'm not 100% sure. But the quote said, we overestimate what we can do in one year and we underestimate what we can do in 10. That sort of mentality keeps us from starting, keeps us from pushing forward and recognizing that whatever we are doing today is ultimately adding up to where we think we want to be mm. and we just need to keep going mm. and essentially surrender yeah and trust the, the surrender the surrender piece is really really challenging at least it was for me personally and i think part of like you know being in therapy and working through all of this i i really realized in in my obsession with age obviously and a lot of it came from my family and we always talked about age my parents mm. were so young so i know that affected me but i realized now and it was a once i removed ego from the conversation mm. Uh, although oh, I were her. present, <laughs> oh her! <laughs> I realized that a lot of the things I wanted, my ego wanted, mm. and now I'm realizing. And it was this was a hard place for me to get to. Like I didn't deserve what I wanted when I was 25. I wouldn't have. I wouldn't have needed it. I couldn't have handled it. Right. I couldn't have handled what I wanted. I right. talk about you know my experience with Queer Eye and I was very far along in the audition process and it was that room and I, I felt like I was probably 31 at the time, 32, and I felt like I had worked my whole life for mm. that specific opportunity. Be on TV, doing hair, and being fabulous and gay. Right. I was like, this is what I have done. I have sacrificed a million things for this opportunity. It didn't happen. And I was like, well, now what? Right. I'm 32 years old. What am I going to do the rest of my life? <laughs> But I think about mm. now, had I gotten it, I, it wasn't for me. Right. I would not have been able to manage it. I was not in the proper headspace for it. Right. I wouldn't have really appreciated what it was. And I honestly probably would have messed it up in some way. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. No, I do. And in so many ways, rejection is protection. Mm. You know? And if it's not protection, it's redirection. There's there's so many ways for us to, to experience what we want in this lifetime and I think we, age is one of the things that if we fixate on it, it becomes a limitation. Mm. I hope that we get to a place where we don't need to see it. But for now, I'm just so grateful for the it. people that, that step out there and show me like what life can be like at every age and every stage. I think about people like my mom who, you know, it's uh, also being a person of color where you're like, or a queer person that like you don't see yourself represented, so you don't realize you're missing it, right? Mm. But now that there were seeing campaigns, be a lot of beauty campaigns and covers, and people on because of the advent of mm -hmm. social media and TikTok, we're seeing people who are more mature acting and behaving and doing things that we thought we really only had reserved for younger people. Right. It's inspiring people like my mom. She's mm. like, I want to be on YouTube. I want to play with makeup. I want to wear liner. Like, I want to do okay. these things. And I'm like. Yeah, yes. these, these these limitations are not real. Your life They're is imposed. not over. It's just no, starting. no. Yeah. I think it's like a really, really um, beautiful thing to see people holding hands in their own awareness yes. and how they wake up to things. Yeah. I think that. How do you think we start becoming more aware of the unconscious bias that we might have? Mm. around age because i know for myself i it's it's just how we are we're just humans yeah. i see someone who i who appears to be older than me i am already going to have a preconceived notion sure. that's just how humans work right what sorts of things can people do to not have that unconscious bias or is that something that's just kind of ingrained in us i mean i feel like it's it is it is a little bit ingrained, I, I would imagine, and, it and it's reinforced by society. I, what I want to say is follow your bliss 
and discover your passions. I think we start to age in the way that people perceive as negative when we stop doing the things that we're passionate about and we start shooting on ourselves. I should this, I should that, I shouldn't this, I shouldn't that. I don't believe in that anymore. I am dressing and and presenting myself in ways that are just true to me. And I think mm. that, that that's one of the things that we can do is it starts with us and what we care about and what we're passionate about and not believing the lie that we can't. It might be more difficult. It might take, it's going to take more work. Uh, there will potentially be more hurdles. You may not have the same level of support, but you could end up looking up and being inspiring to someone who was in that exact same position thinking those very same things. Yeah. I think about um, anyone listening who is more mature and they're like, well, that's nice of them to say. <laughs> they're, you know, to some people, 42 is very young. Yes, and it is. And, it is very, yeah. and it is. Yes, yeah, so is 80. Um, and <laughs> so is 80, so it's not. Honestly. I, I just sometimes think about someone listening and they're like, well, that's very nice, you know, but life is hard and we have things to do. And, you know, this was, these are the cards that I was dealt and I don't have the access or the privilege to mm. do these things. I can say for myself, what I would say to someone like that is find a space where you can play again. Whatever that looks like for you. Yes. What was it that you loved when you were a kid? What, do you, what does that look like for you? It can be very small. I'm not yeah. saying quit your job. Right. And run away from your children. <laughs> I'm saying, how can you somehow connect to something to what we consider to be youth that does not revolve around what we physically look like? Yes. What do you think people can do to kind of like, if there's someone that's still grumpy pants out there listening, I'm like, oh, that's nice. Like, yeah. Baby, I'm telling you, like, do I, something. Yeah, do something. I mean, I, I. Like, I loved your birthday. Your oh, birthday yeah. idea was every, a great. Yeah, every so every single year I either do a photo shoot. This year I bumped it up a, a level and I did a video shoot. Oh, girl. Okay, and I know it's just going to get bigger and broader. And I, yeah, I think I think taking your birthday as an opportunity to be reflective mm. and to check in, like you were saying, with your inner child. What was the thing that you wanted to do when you were a kid? And life maybe happened or there were certain experiences that kept you from those things. Is there a way to bring that into your life, either yourself or to support someone else who has that in their lives to be able to get a little closer to that? I think what you were saying about play is the single, like that is it. Not being afraid to to just color outside of the lines or color at all. Mm. I think that um, I, I think a little bit about this video that I, I've seen a couple of videos. Like one, I think about this TikTok video of the little boy listening to Beethoven for the first time, Moonlight mm. Sonata, and he's just like sobbing. And I'm like, oh, the purity of emotion when you're yes. that. And then I saw this other video where there was this much uh, this mature woman who had always wanted this specific doll, but her parents couldn't afford it for her. Mm. And it was given to her at like, I think a keep me honest social media it was given to her as some sort of event some sort of life event okay and she broke down sobbing because she was like mm. it was you can see her connection to her childhood of just like i never thought i would connect to this mm. have this doll or have this and it's like you know we all have those things about us at our childhood you see it and you're just like brought back to that place yes i think that you know, the conversation we're having is very special. I think redefining aging and what it looks like in 2023 and beyond is very special. And I also think that we all have a responsibility to just look at each other as humans outside of the labels and the age numbers that we have around us. And just where are you in your life? You yes. know, do you respect me? Do I respect you? What can I learn from you? And it goes both ways. I can learn a lot from people younger than me and vice versa. Yes. Um, I want to thank you so much for spending this time with me oh. and sharing your light with us here. Um, we're going to do one more little card game we do at the end of every episode. Cool. It's an easy one. We're not playing Yahtzee or anything, unless you want to play Yahtzee. Um, <laughs> so we're going to play this card game. So these are just Cute. different types of questions. There are beauty related questions of some sort. And you'll are going to ask me a question. Okay, wonderful. And I'll ask you questions. So this was really wonderful, by the way. Oh my God. Thank this you. was very lovely. Yeah, it we, was, we got underneath the epidermis. We, we really we really did. <laughs> we got, we got, we got, we got we a little We really did. There, I didn't but... ask you one question about your beauty routine or what your secrets are. Oh. But maybe I will. Okay. It's always the question. Literally every time it's like, what's your secret? I'm like, I don't know. I've been getting both since I was 27. Is, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Mine is smiling, laughing, and changing my products. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so I'm going to put okay. three cards out. I'm Great. a little bit like... Your nails are epic, by the oh, way. Oh, thank really you. Yummy. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Get the mm -hmm. nails and the yeah, cards yeah. right there. There you go. <laughs> right? Okay, so I'm going to let you pick a card. Okay. 
And then you can ask me a question Great. and I'll pick a card as well. Down I'll pick the middle. this one. Mm. What's one thing you would never change about yourself? Oh. <sighs> Deep exhale. My fluidity. Yes. Both mental and emotional and gender fluidity. I would never. Yes. I, I feel like a very fluid person. I, yeah. I'm very easy to, um, some people might say otherwise, can be very stubborn, but mm. I consider myself to be a very fluid person in both, in, in many ways, emotionally, my gender, my interests, mm. my journey of life. I, I think a lot about this um, analogy. I, I live on analogies is that when you go get a shot, and they tell you to relax the muscle because a tense muscle is going to hurt more. Mm -hmm. So I think about that a lot in any experience. How soft am I going into this? It's going to hurt a little more if I'm going into it hard. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I try to soften myself on a lot of things. I love that. It means being very fluid. What about you? One thing I would not change about myself, my empathy. Mm. Yeah. I What's love your sign? Scorpio. Ooh. <laughs> I love that I love so big and I love that I love in spite. Mm. In spite of, mm -hmm. I think that, you know, I've been, have, I've had a lot of adversity and experiences. I had a friend, um, a former friend, uh, steal my identity. <laughs> yeah. I was the victim of identity theft and fraud. And, and you're literally a celebrity. Yeah. Did, yeah. This what? happened a few years ago and oh it was, it was, it was devastating and crippling. And one of the, it was the biggest, uh, lesson of my adult life and the hardest thing I went through, uh, probably even more difficult than, than leaving my husband, honestly, because of who I had to become in order to get myself out of that situation. And even still through all of that, I still have empathy and compassion, uh, first and foremost for myself. Um, but also I have empathy and I recognize that I didn't go to business school and I had a business. And I think we have to, in some ways, pay. Like nothing in life is actually free. And if I spent more time focused on why me, why this happened to me, I wouldn't have gleaned the lessons that I was able to gain that will make me the powerhouse that I know mm. I'm destined to be. So come on, powerhouse. Okay. Come on. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, this is a good question. Speaking of friends, what would your best friend say is your best quality? Oh my God. What would she say is my best quality? What's her name? Shauna. Shout out to Shauna. Hey, Shauna. 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 <laughs> um, my best quality. Oh my God. I'm going to tell you what she would really say. Okay. okay. My booty cheeks. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to try to say something like sweet and endearing and wonderful, but I was like, no, she would be like, girl, that butt. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's what she would say. Um, earlier last year, I, I love, I live by mantras and yeah. I love mantras. And uh, last year I, I had one come to me and it is, I do what I want. I know what I need. I live by my feelings and the healing is in my booty cheeks. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> and so, yeah. That's going to be a soundbite. I yeah. guarantee you. We're going to do a pickup of that. that. Is, so that is my mantra. And oh I, my God, I wrote obsessed. it. It came to me. I Yeah. And right, I need and it I on was a like, t-shirt? No, but really. And I was like, and what I mean by the healing is in my booty cheeks is I, I do feel like I've been cut off from my lower chakras <laughs> for a long time. And so whether it be shaking them or showing them, right. that, mm. that I just wanted to embrace the fullness of who I am and not feel that I have to compartmentalize the activist from the actress, the youth advocate from the whatever I am in the world, that that I can be a full-fledged, well-rounded human being, booty cheeks and all. Booty cheeks and all. <laughs> I know my mom's listening to this being like, girl, why you always gotta have your behind out? But sorry, mom. It is what it is. Sorry, mom. They yeah. are great booty cheeks. So they are great booty just cheeks. Gotta, just gotta embrace them. <laughs> what about um, you? I also, so I was telling you before when we sat down, the, 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 um, Set is surrounded by gifts that yes. we have here from different people. And there's some very special things. And as this is the third season now, it keeps growing and growing. Um, so I understand that there's something here. I did. I brought okay. something for you. Gonna, is it? Do I see it? It's in this box. Oh, wonderful. And I'm going to give you the box. And if you'd like, you can present it. I sure will. I don't know what it is. Okay. Well, uh, hmm, I'll give it to you first and I'll tell you why. Okay. Okay. This is for you. Okay. I'm already liking what I'm saying. There you go. It is a journal. Oh, my God. How and do you know? I, uh, 
I'm giving it to you because journaling is a very, very important part of my life journey and experience. And I wrote one of my favorite quotes in the front, which is by Florence Scovel Shin, which says, nothing is too good to be true. Nothing is too wonderful to happen and nothing is too good to last. So because we're talking about age, um, I think it's important that we remember that everything that we want is still possible yeah. and it can last and, like, and stay period. forever. So, and I also wrote little, <laughs> I wrote Sorry, little, Jenny. <laughs> oh my God. um, I wrote little things, uh, just kind of throughout it as you use it. Um, you are enough, you're abundant, just little affirmations and quotes that this you will stumble so upon as you uh, journal. But Winnie, thank you so much. This is Aww. so special. Um, I, I've, I don't know if I've ever mentioned it here on the podcast, but I've been keeping a journal since I was eight. Uh, we have a lot of similarities. Yeah, I know, I know. Our parents, my mom had me when she was 19 yeah, as well. Yeah. I started journaling when I was around seven or eight. Yeah, it yeah. was, um, it's a very special gift to be able to go and read what I thought and what I was experiencing when I was eight or nine or 10. Yeah. And I think that, you know, when it comes to thinking about aging and thinking about our youth and what that looks like and what it feels like, I mean, I, I have a journal entry I wrote when I was 10 that said I wanted to start my life over. And mm. no 10 year old should I be writing things like that. I want to start my life over. Yeah. But at the same time, it was such a beautiful gift because it's a record of my stories. Yes. And this is a very, very special gift. And I can't wait. I, and they're going to keep it locked in here, imprisoned in the set until <laughs> we wrap. But I can't wait to write in it. Awesome. And um, I'm going to cherish it. I love journaling. And um, this is very, very special. Thank you so much. You're thank so you. Thank, thank you. you. Um, and once again, thank you so much for spending, spending this time with us and sharing your light. Mm. Um, I hope if you're listening, or watching that you heard something that opened your mind or your heart um, please let us know you know what your thoughts are on aging or ageism anyone younger or older how you experience it um, Monique do you want to tell people where they can find you things that you have coming up or any work you're doing you want to share sure um for the Disney fans out there, yeah. I'm returning to the fourth season of High School Musical, the musical, the series. Stop it! Yes. I literally just threw my two on the ground. I'm sorry. So I'm Hold so <laughs> I'm so excited. That's to, so cool. It really, it oh really my god, that's is. amazing. It really is. So I'm so excited to be back at East High. Um, and you can follow me on Instagram at underscore Monique Coleman. And I'm not sure what this year holds, but I'm really, um, I'm really excited because I am in the best place I've ever been in my life. So follow me to find out with me. I have one more question. Yes, this is totally off topic. Okay. I feel like I just have to for any HSM high school musical fans out there like okay. myself. Is there like a specific like? Um, Something you see similar across all the fans that you have from High School Musical, like that you're like, whenever you meet someone that like loves you from High School Musical, mm. that you're like, I recognize a little bit of of something in this person. I know for me, I, like anytime someone comes up to me and says something about my social media or anything, I'm just like, oh yeah, I, I can tell we're a kindred spirit. Yeah. But people have a very deep connection to High School Musical. Very, very, very deep connection. And specifically for me playing Taylor, I often have girls come up and say, you represented something that I didn't see on television before then. Because Taylor McKessie, believe it or not, came before the Obamas and she thought she was going to be the president <laughs> of the United States. <laughs> Obviously. Um, but a lot of times I have uh, uh, particularly black girls come and say, thank you. Thank mm. you for opening a door and thank you for for being representation um, that did not exist before before Taylor. So I noticed that they are often girls that, um, or just people that um, maybe didn't feel seen for being smart. Mm, I love that. Yeah. Thank you again. Thank oh you for God, being so gracious you. and answering our questions and, yeah. and my questions and spending time with us. And um, until next time, everyone, I hope you're happy, well, yes. and safe wherever you are. Uh, again, hoping something that triggered to open your mind to your heart. And I'll mm. see you all very, very soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.